Now that I finally have some time to sit down and make another video, there's a newer manga I've been dying to talk about since its release back in November, and it's called Ayashimon. Now I've been reading it pretty consistently since the first chapter, which honestly hasn't been that long, as there's currently only 12 chapters out, but thus far it's been one of the main mangas that I really look forward to reading with each new release. It's from the same author as Hell's Paradise, Yuji Kaku, which, if you haven't read Hell's Paradise, it's definitely worth a read. Or you can just wait and watch the anime that should be coming out later this year. The trailer already looks amazing and I'm super hyped for it. Having both Hell's Paradise and Chainsaw Man coming out this year is just the best thing ever. And I can't wait. But this isn't the time for that. So, let me run through a bit of Ayashimon. And there's going to be some spoilers from this point, so be warned and go read it. At its most basic, Ayashimon is a combination of a Yakuza plot mixed with a supernatural world. There are basically yokai known as Ayashimon that run the gangs of Japan's underworld, and they're spirits that take physical form consisting mostly of money that has been imbued with emotions from humans, which can take upwards of 99 years for them to manifest into these vessels, and they look very similar to humans and blend into society outside of their specified areas and feeding grounds. Among them, all disputes are decided by ritual duels, so it's a world where the stronger you are, the higher you can climb, which works really well for the main character, Maruo. Maruo has a fairly simplistic design, and he immediately reminded me of Nice from Hamatara with all of his bandages and stuff, but it's just a rather simplistic way of showing that a character gets into a lot of fights or has some minor injuries from whatever. But other than that, he just seems like a fairly basic character design-wise, which is somewhat fitting because he is just a normal human. And initially, he comes off as more of a self-insert character for the reader, where he's just absurdly overpowered compared to all the other humans, and has an obsession with manga with the somewhat generic I-want-to-be-a-manga-protagonist character motivation, which is just a bit off-putting for me at first, but when you learn more about his backstory, it starts to feel more like his way of dealing with his past trauma, rather than him actually striving to be a manga protagonist. As a child, he was heavily abused by his father, and would often get bullied for having scars and bruises, and his way of dealing with it all was manga, which I'm sure more than a few people can relate with. But with his love for manga, he would idolize the protagonist who would look super cool, covered in bandages, and strive to be like them. So he trained like the characters he looked up to, so he could be just like them. It's like if you did the Saitama workout from One Punch Man, but it actually somewhat worked and made you as strong as him, which would just be absurd. But this is a manga and it's acceptable. But most people use things like manga or video games to escape their current reality for a time, but Maruo uses it like a blueprint to push his limits and change his own reality. So when a character like this exists, I don't feel as annoyed with the seemingly lazy character motivation, because it actually fits and kind of makes sense. But despite striving for and achieving an overwhelming power, Maruo isn't happy. He's gone far past the normal limits of humans, and is incapable of living a normal life now, because of his strength. He tries to find something in life that he can do, but ultimately ends up destroying almost everything he tries to do. At least, until we meet the other main character, Urara. Ur Urara. Ur Urara. Urara. Urara is a fairly interesting character to me. I think she has one of the better designs out of all of the other characters. It's not extremely flashy and wild, but it's also not too generic that I'll easily forget what she looks like, and I think overall it's just a cute design. Unlike Maruo, she is not a human, she's an Ayashimon, and is the illegitimate daughter of the largest Yakuza group's chairman, Kyo, and plans on taking over after his death and getting revenge on those who she suspects had a hand in his unnatural death. But the main problem is she's completely alone and has very few allies. She was kept mostly a secret from the rest of the world due to her father's influence and never really got the chance to spend much, if any, time with her father. So she has some abandonment issues she has to work through, especially in her earlier time in the world, constantly thinking that her father wanted nothing to do with her, which we only have gotten a small glimpse of. 
but she had at least one companion named Hashihime who worked under her father as kind of like her guardian, who was constantly telling her that she wasn't abandoned and wasn't worthless. So she wasn't completely alone either. Initially, she comes off as a bit of an arrogant and overconfident character, but with her background and motivation being known, she seems like she might just be completely blinded by her anger and loneliness more than anything. She's trying everything she can to get revenge, and she can't show how weak and vulnerable she actually is, or maybe I'm looking too far into these characters and finding things that aren't actually there. Either way, she's a pretty cool character. I think that Urara and Maruo make a really nice duo for the story, and they'll be able to bring out the most potential from one another. The rest of the supporting characters thus far have been fairly decent. The only complaint I have right now is for a character called Ten. His personality is just too cowardly and scared, which I'm not a big fan of. It reminds me a lot of Zenitsu in Demon Slayer, and I'm not the biggest fan of Zenitsu, but he has his time and place where it's not overly obnoxious, and I feel the same way about Ten thus far. But I can definitely see Ten changing the longer he's around Maruo. His character doesn't really take away from the story at all, so it's not a big problem. And he has had some pretty good moments already, but the personality in general just isn't my favorite. He's probably going to grow on me over time, but as of right now, I, I just don't enjoy the character. But with the majority of characters being yokai, they all have some sort of crazy power or ability that they use to fight with while they're in their yokai form. Like, Urara turns into this really cool beast thing. Uh, Hashihime also has this really cool monster form, which is just awesome. And Ten can phase through things and looks like an eggplant wearing blackface for some reason. But... There's basically an endless amount of abilities that can exist in this world, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what crazy things will show up in the future chapters. At first it seemed like the story was progressing extremely fast, and wouldn't be able to hold my interest very long, as it looked like the big bad was going to fight within the first 10 chapters. But it was done in such a way that the main characters realized how weak and powerless they actually are in comparison to the upper tier gang members, and now they have to try and work around that and gain more influence and strength by recruiting more people and finding allies. So I have a feeling that there's going to be a lot more to the series, especially dealing with the gang politics and acquiring allies in general. I'm really enjoying Ayashimon so far, and might make more videos on it in the future, but for now there's only 12 chapters out, and I don't want to sit here and explain the entirety of it when it's only just the beginning. I know not everybody likes to read currently publishing manga and wait around each week for new releases, but I think this is a series that has a lot of potential, and you should definitely check it out. Thanks for watching.